So greetings and welcome back to the studio. This is the Wild Treasures of an Outdoorsman YouTube channel and my name is Peter Updike and we're going to talk about something that I made a little discovery. I'm learning this as I go and uh, yeah I've learned something important and I want to pass it on to you. Some of you may already know about it but uh, yeah I, I had to learn the hard way teaching myself, getting tips from others. Maybe it was good advice. Maybe it was bad advice. Either way, I somehow managed to, you know, stumble through issues. And we're going to address one of those. But first, I want to invite you to consider purchasing a copy of my book, Wild Treasures of an Outdoorsman, as a Christmas present. You can get one at Pat's Pawn and Gun. I wrote it. It's hunting and fishing and things connected. It's about growing up and uh, making mistakes and learning from your mistakes and moving forward from boyhood into adulthood, into manhood and beyond. Yeah, that's my book. It's hunting and fishing. Pat's Pawn and Gun. Go to their website. Click on hunting. Pat's Pawn and Gun in Leesburg, Florida. Click on hunting and then click on publications. It'll come up. They'll ship one right out to you. It'll make a great... Christmas present. I think all of them are signed and autographed. And uh, yeah, I know you'll enjoy it. Hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of copies have been sold, and I'm quite proud of that. So uh, yeah, Wild Treasures of an Outdoorsman. Again, at Pat's Pawn and Gun on their website. Click on Publications, then click click on Hunting, then click on Publications, and it'll come up. I think they're $15 plus shipping and handling. So, uh, yeah, that's going to be the, the end of it because Pat's Pawn and Gun is going to be um, closing its doors forever. And I'm sad about that, but I'm happy for Darren who's seeking to retire. So, uh, yeah, he's selling the books for me and always has, and I appreciate him so much. This will be the last Christmas. He'll be doing it for me. So, um, yeah, i got to get another dozen copies over there to him. Uh, if you'll remember last hunting season, I accidentally dropped my rifle. I leaned it up against a tree, and I dropped my rifle and bumped the scope. So I went to the gun range, an indoor gun range near my home, and I checked it to see if the scope was still on. And to my surprise, it was not. It was at 50 yards, it was like six inches to the right. So I undid the caps, and I took my quarter, and I turned the thing the appropriate clicks, and I shot again. And all of a sudden, it was six inches to the left. So I clicked it back, shot again, and it didn't move. I clicked again, shot again, and it didn't move. That's it. I'm done, right? I'm going to buy a new scope. So I went and bought a Leupold scope, and uh, you saw the video where I put that scope by myself. I didn't have somebody do it. I learn as I go, teaching myself how to do these things, right? And uh, some of you gave me tips, which help, okay? And uh, I mounted that scope, best I know how, and went back to the range, and I zeroed it in. It's a, a Remington Model 700, no, I'm sorry, a M Model 7 uh, bolt gun. And I checked it after I mounted the scope on a, a brand new Leupold scope, put it on there, and uh, was able to dial that thing in. And I was at a 50-yard indoor range. So I went ahead and sighted it in at 50 yards. And a few weeks went by, and I had no opportunity on deer. I didn't shoot at anything. And I went to the gun shop to visit with Darren. I said, hey, man, I got that scope mounted on my rifle. And I sighted it in at 50 yards. He said, you realize, Peter, that if you sight that thing in at 50 yards, it's going to be, and this shocked me, okay, I'll admit it, it's going to be four inches high at 100 yards. I said, four inches high at 100 yards? That's the only 50-yard difference. How is that bullet going to climb? I, I kind of called BS on him. I said, I don't believe that's true. Now, throughout my youth and as I learned, I always sighted in, whether it was a 30-30 or a 308 or a 30 yacht 6 I always sighted in for 100 yards. And I could accurately hit targets 
at 100 yards with any rifle that I took a field. Now, I went to the 50-yard range again because it's close to my home. I just assumed that if I could dial it in at 50 yards, that it would be good out to 100, 150, 200 yards. I had no idea that that particular cartridge and that particular distance is extreme when it comes just to the 50-yard difference. I was troubled by those words, and they haunted me all summer. So I decided before gun season started that I would go to an outdoor gun range. And I went to one out on Treasure Island. I can't remember the name of it. It'll come to me here in a little bit. But uh, I went to an outdoor gun range. Um, I guess it's Leesburg on Treasure Island. And I went through the little testing period and the questions that they ask so I can use their range and I went on a Thursday when there weren't a whole lot of people there and uh, they have a hundred yards outdoor range I was very happy with the facility I was very happy with the uh, staff there and so I got set up and there were other people shooting uh, a lot of if, if you if you if you had ever had a gun range it can be a lot of confusion and uh, you need to Wear your earplugs and wear your ear just for, just for the sake of zoning out from what's going on around you, right? Um, you have to ask for a cold range whenever you want to set up a target. They had targets there, and uh, they had cardboard cutouts and wooden slats and a stand, you would need to run out there to 100 yards and set that thing up, right? And then come back, and while you're doing that, everyone else is waiting for you to get your business done, uh, and then they can resume with a hot range. Uh, they would, they would, yeah, set up and do a hot range. And then everyone starts shooting again. So I got there, and, and of course... Everyone there knew each other, and everyone it had their little click going on, and I was kind of, I kind of felt like the outside guy. But they had a range master there, who was very professional, and very courteous. And I said, I need to set up my target, and he said, Okay, we're going to call for a cold range. So he called for a cold range, and of course there goes Peter out there with his target. Nobody else; they're all just waiting on me. Yeah, it was a little awkward, but that's okay. I got over it. It's what they do. So I set up my target, and what I used are these. Shoot and see. Now, what happens when you impact the target? It's a pretty big target. What happens is it it lights up with a, a yellow, um, as you can see here on the display, a yellow impact, right? You hit this black area, and it has a yellow impact sight. So you can see from a distance, what you've hit. And then you've got these little dots here that peel off and you can cover it up, right, after. These are great targets. I think I got these at um, Sportsman's Warehouse. But they're large, and of course it's got the bullseye. So this is what I took with me. You peel them off and you stick them on. You don't have to staple them on. You stick them onto the cardboard and set the thing up. So also... I take with me and took with me on that trip. I bought a, I took, I had my scope and I had a pair of binoculars, but I set up this inexpensive. Okay, you don't need to buy a real expensive one, but this is very handy. Okay, spot and scope. It comes with a little tripod stand like this. You set up that tripod stand on your shooting bench. And I've got my spot and scope inside here. It's a Winchester. I don't know. It's 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 import. It's an import product, but it works, right? It's not it's not that big a deal. It's a it's better than your binoculars, and it's better than your scope if you're having trouble seeing. Yeah, I've got this spot and scope. Mounts on the tripod. You can set it up on the shooting bench and get it all zeroed in. And then don't touch it. You just drop behind it and look through it. 
after every shot and and you don't and it's it's a great asset to have if you're going to the gun range and you're going to be shooting at 100 yards or greater if you use those targets with the yellow impact dot and a spotting scope it makes life a whole lot easier okay so that's what i took with me as well as my earplugs my safety glasses and my headphones my head head i use the earplugs and the headgear okay so I got set up and uh, zero and 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 got my target set up and got my rifle. I took a rest. I took a big. I've got bags and I set my rifle up on top of those bags, and uh, yeah, get behind the rifle and ease the safety off and take a deep breath, just like I've always been taught. I never had any uh, formal marksmanship training. Uh, yeah, Boy Scouts, we did the 22 rifles, and and yeah, when we started deer hunting as teenagers, we learned how to shoot a milk jug at 100 yards, and if you could hit that milk jug, it was good enough, but as you get older and as you get more wiser, and the, you realize that perfection is, is just, you know, a sliding scale, it's just that it's just that far away. You can you can dial things in and be extremely accurate. So that's that was my goal as I got older. Anyway, um, back to where, back to the gun range. I like I said I had zeroed in my model seven seven millimeter 08 at fifty yards at the indoor gun range. I shot it and guess what? I was four inches high. I was shocked. I. If there was, a, I thought maybe there'd be a half truth to what he was saying, and I'd be an inch, two inches high. But I was a full four inches high, just like he said, and I was shocked. So uh, yeah, I decided to let that be a lesson to me. And so this was his advice to me. He said, "You should be an inch high at one hundred yards." And at 200 yards, you'll be dead on. Now, he showed me ballistics on the box and, and what different cartridges will do. I would encourage you to educate yourself as I'm trying. This is, this, this is not new to me, but it, I, I don't have any expertise in the matter. So there is a way to side in your rifle where, it's, where if, you, if you shoot, at 100 yards, you can be a little high and be good out to 300. And uh, yeah, that's that's a that's a good that's a good thing. So um, one more thing, I had took along my muzzle loader, and I thought, and I made the comment on my muzzle loading video that I did not know how much my muzzle loader would drop at 100 yards, and I had it sighted in. At 50, when I went to field, I had, I had my muzzleloader sighted in at 50. And I remember sighting it in when I was going on my elk hunt. And uh, that, was, that was the only distance I was able to get proper sighting for. And, yeah, I went a field with a 50-yard sight in. And I thought there's no way that I'd be able to hit anything at 100 yards. So I loaded up that muzzleloader, right? And I put it on that sandbag and I shot at the same target. I just put my 7 mm right up and picked up my muzzle loader and I let her rip. And it was two inches low. Holy smokes, I really thought that that thing would hit the ground. I had no idea that my muzzle loader had such reach. Now I know. What if, uh, I wonder what would happen if I zeroed that thing in at 100 yards. I was two inches low. I wanted it to be accurate at 50 because most of my muzzle loader hunting is done inside heavy cover. Most of my hunting is all done inside heavy cover. But if on the outside chance that you get an 80, 90, or 100-yard shot with a muzzleloader, you want to be able to make that shot. And, yeah, I, I have learned something very, very important, and I wanted to pass that on to you. Hunt Muzzleloader season is coming up next year, and I'm going to be going to a, to a hunt with a muzzle loader that I know now is accurate out to 100 yards. And uh, I always knew that you were able to get that thing dialed in and shoot it at 100 yards, but I never had the opportunity to check it. 
and see. So I just went hunting with a 50 yard side in, and it was just a little low. It was just, it was just a little low. So I'm celebrating my new, my new knowledge on my rifle. I'm going to field confident that my rifle sighted in. I'm going to field confident that my muzzleloader can get the job done. And uh, those were little black spots in my view. And now they are clear. So uh, I hope this video helps you. Again, Wild Treasures of an Outdoorsman is available at Pat's Pawn and Gun on their website. Get one. I would really appreciate it. I, I really, I don't know what I'm going to do after Pat closes up his shop, how I'm going to, I just think I might just keep the rest of my copies that I have here and take them to the turkey extravaganza, sell some of them, give some of them away. Maybe we're going to do give it some more giveaways uh, coming up. So yeah, I, 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 I do not want to leave this side of glory to the next side of glory and leave a boxes and boxes of copies of my book for my family members to dispose of or give away or they don't know what to do with them. So I'd rather see people get them that were willing to pay for them. I want it to be a successful endeavor. It is. It's been a successful endeavor. I just don't want boxes of them sitting sitting in here. So uh, once they're gone, they're gone. I'll keep, you know, half a dozen copies for myself and that'll be, that'll be my legacy. So uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you want to. This is the Wild Treasures of an Outdoorsman YouTube channel. Let's go to the gun range. I wish I could remember the name of that gun range. Um, I'll find out. All right. Love you guys. Get that gun sighted in. Let's go hunting. See you. Bye. I was four inches high. I was shocked. I, if there was a, I thought maybe there would be a half truth to what he was saying, and I'd be an inch, two inches high. But I was a full four inches high, just like he said. And I was shocked. So, uh, yeah, I decided to let that be a lesson to me. And so this was his advice to me. He said, you should be an inch high at 100 yards. And at 200 yards, you'll be dead on. Now, he showed me ballistics on the box. And, and what different cartridges will do. I would encourage you to educate yourself as I'm trying. This is this, this is not new to me, but it, I, I don't have any expertise in the matter. So there's a way to side in your rifle where it's where if you if you shoot at a hundred yards, you can be a little high and be good out to three hundred. And uh yeah, that's that's a that's a good that's a good thing. So um, one more thing, I had took along my muzzle loader, and I thought, and I made the comment on my muzzle loading video that I did not know how much my muzzle loader would drop at 100 yards, and I had it sighted in at 50. When I went afield, I had I had my muzzle loader sighted in at 50, and I remember sighting it in when I was going on my elk hunt, and. Uh, that was that was the only distance I was able to get proper sighting for, and yeah, I went a field with a 50 yard sight in, and I thought there's no way that I'd be able to hit anything at 100 yards. So I loaded up that muzzle loader, right, and I put it on that sandbag, and I shot at the same target. I just put my 7 millimeter right up and picked up my muzzle loader, and I let it rip, and it was two inches low. Holy smokes, I really thought that that thing would hit the ground. I had no idea that my muzzleloader had such reach. Now I know. What if, uh, I wonder what would happen if I zeroed that thing in at 100 yards. I was two inches low. I wanted it to be accurate at 50 because most of my muzzleloader hunting is done inside heavy cover. Most of my hunting is all done inside heavy cover. But if, on the outside chance that you get an 80, 90, or 100-yard shot with a muzzleloader, you want to be able to make that shot. And, yeah, I, I have learned something very, very important, and I wanted to pass that on to you. Hunt Muzzleloader season is coming up next year, and I'm going to be going to a, to a hunt 
with a muzzleloader that I know now is accurate out to 100 yards. And uh, I always knew that you were able to get that thing dialed in and shoot it at 100 yards, but I never had the opportunity to check it and see. So I just went hunting with a 50-yard sight, and it was just a little low. It was just... It was just a little low. So I'm celebrating my new my new knowledge on my rifle. I'm going a field confident that my rifle sighted in. I'm going a field confident that my muzzleloader can get the job done. And uh, those were little black spots in my view. And now they are clear. So uh, I hope this video helps you. Again, Wild Treasures of an Outdoorsman is available at Pat's Pawn and Gun on their website get one i would really appreciate it i really i don't know what i'm going to do after pat closes up his shop how i'm going to i just think might just keep the rest of my copies that i have here and take them to the turkey extravaganza sell some of them give some of them away maybe we'll do give it some more giveaways uh coming up so yeah I, 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 I do not want to leave this side of glory to the next side of glory and leave boxes and boxes of copies of my book for my family members to dispose of or give away or they don't know what to do with them so i'd rather see people get them that were willing to pay for them i want it to be a successful endeavor it is it's been a successful endeavor i just don't want boxes of them sitting sitting in here so uh once they're gone they're gone i'll keep you know half a dozen copies for myself and That'll be that'll be my legacy. So uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Like and subscribe if you want to. This is the Wild Treasures of an Outdoorsman YouTube channel. Let's go to the gun range. I wish I could remember the name of that gun range. Um, I'll find out. All right, love you guys. Get that gun sighted in. Let's go hunting. See you. Bye.